The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We got to clear something up here today, folks. There's trouble in River City. You got to be really careful about the news. That's everything. There was a report yesterday in Florida. Woman stops 12-foot alligator with a 22 caliber pistol. Well, if you go and look between the lines, what's happening is they're walking, her and her husband are walking along a path. Out pops a very hungry 12-foot alligator and starts charging him. And as she's fumbling, she inadvertently fires and hits her husband in the knee. And she takes off. The law didn't work out too well for the husband. So just be careful about the news when you read it. It's not always what you think it is. Let's move on to the German DAX. By the way, Something from my childhood in Indiana, very, very important, but it doesn't really apply very much anymore because back in those days, the liquor stores were always closed on a holiday, so it was important to have a good 4th of July. Make sure you buy a 5th on the 3rd. <laughs> All right, that's enough. We'll talk. At least, at least we don't have to listen to Norman today. That's a good thing. Let's take a look here at the German DAX, folks. Uh, we had a pretty good run-up. Uh, still hasn't. It's completed the ABCD, but you'll notice the FTSE uh, has certainly completed and it's gapped up and it's heading towards the, I think we probably already made it by this morning because this is a four-hour chart and it only had uh, another 70 points to go uh, to complete the, uh, uh, it's already completed the big ABCD. It might complete the uh, butterfly pattern there also. So that's it. Okay, move on to a couple other things, and then I'll get to what I think is the most important thing. Let's move on. We have to give our hats off to our Mr. good friend uh, Norm Winsky yesterday, and Mr. Z in the room. Uh, they were buying the silver and the you know the gold. You can see the ABCD pattern in the gold exactly at the time that uh, Norman had uh, thought it was going to be, and he had that key seat, key. Uh, signal in silver yesterday, so that worked out. If you bought that silver, put your stop at, uh, say, 1430, you know, pr pr uh, pr pr protect at least a $300 profit so you don't lose anything on that. That's the way I would do it because we're going to we're gonna start seeing low volume uh, today, uh, close tomorrow, and then Friday will be very, very low. Believe me, you, those boys don't like to come in uh, from the uh, Hamptons without a uh, – uh, you know, something really dramatic happening. Now, we hear lots of news that they're getting ready to do something in Iran. Uh, that's that's certainly possible that we, we don't know if that's going to be the case or not, but uh, the markets are still still acting pretty good, so we'll see. Now, we made new highs in notes and bonds, folks. That's the next time we did that. Let's take a look at what happened in the open interest yesterday. Not that this means any good, because as Sir John Simpleson said it's different this time. You can see the open interest in the 10-year notes dropped by 62,000 roughly and in 43,000 in the two-year notes. That that is more than 7.2 million of all the open interest. Folks, that's a lot. Those are the biggest contracts that we trade, but that's short covering. I know I know I'm wrong now, but eventually the, the, the <laughs> when all the shorts have covered, boys and girls, it's over. I mean, it really is. Let's just look at this chart here. You can see where we are. We hit uh, 28 uh, 11, I believe, last night, which is a slightly higher than the other high was at, which was at 20 uh, 28 19, I believe, and that was mainly due because of the rumor about. Uh, bringing Biden back from wherever he was and all the other stuff saying that it uh, looks like there's going to be an armed conflict somewhere. So whether that's going to be the case or not, you know, I really don't know. <laughs> I can remember one story. Uh, this was back uh, in 90, ooh, 90, 92, 91. Yeah, it was 91. And uh, I was in Pismo Beach and I was getting gas Real early in the morning, like at four o'clock, I was heading up to the trading room, and there was uh, 
uh, a car had a had a had a little sports car, and the guy had the same kind of sports car I did. And as I walked by, I looked in the back, and there was a full uh, uh, uniform of a bird colonel uh, in in the uh, in the Air Force. And so I I went in and I started chatting with him, and he and he said, uh, "What what's?" Well, I said, "Where are you going?" He said, "My unit's been called up." And I said, uh, "Care to share with me where you're going?" I said, "I'm a commodity trader," and he said, uh, "I wouldn't be short any oil." And uh, believe me. Oil was at 42, and it went to 11. I remember that. Uh, never got any information, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, we had a nice run in gold yesterday, as you can see. We got up to that uh, 1435 level. The old high is 1441. We've already dropped $17 from that level. Uh, silver rallied yesterday to be up uh, well over $2,100 a contract and gave half of that back. That's why I'm saying, you know, put your stop so you protect some type of a profit because, boys and girls, the old Chinese curse, we do live in interesting times. And not only that, remember, we're going to have thinner markets in here starting today, close tomorrow, and then again on Friday. Friday especially because, you know, I – I'm going to be working, but I'm, you know, one of the few people that I know is going to be working. Everybody's taking that four-day holiday, so uh, remember that 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 liquidity is very, very important. And you can see huge swings, especially in markets like silver. So if silver closes near the low end of the range today, and I'm still in a profit, I'm going to take it out. I just don't want to take that risk, and uh, because uh, you know when you come in the night of the fourth, uh, markets will be trading. Of course, but uh, in fact, they'll be trading all day the 4th. I believe it's all day the 4th because uh, Europe is not closed and certainly Hong Kong isn't with all the people riding over there. And uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty tough gig to, to miss that one. Uh, one of the things we want to mention to you is the fact that the Treasury bonds did make a new high, but only by a couple of ticks. Open interest also dropped in that one. Um, I know it's hard to believe that these things uh, work this way, but they really do. You know, it's it's not always. Uh, I mean, I I've been doing this for a very very long time, and I certainly can't uh, ever remember where you're going to get a bull market. You know, with op dropping open interest, the players are leaving, folks. That's uh, that's the bottom line. I don't know when it's going to end. And of course, nobody else does either. But uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at. We're new highs in the S and P. And uh, which is a new highs in the NASDAQ, which is uh, good. The open interest in the S&P has gone higher. It hasn't changed in the, in the uh, NASDAQ or the, uh, or the uh, Treasury or NASDAQ. Let me see. Let's get this right, Larry. It's changed. The S&P open interest was good. Nothing happened in the NASDAQ and nothing happened in the Dow. So those are the key things to look at. Uh, the other one is this U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is very, very critical in here. The euro can't get moving to the upside after making that major support down there at 112.60. So that's another one that's looking interesting. You know, that be careful. When we get back from this next break, I'd like to show you something on Bitcoin that's uh, that's very, very interesting. I think you'll uh, – I think you might like this, but uh, maybe you won't like it. That I don't know. No matter whether you do or not, I'm going to report on it. So that's the way it is. Okay, uh, let me see. We have any callers coming in? Not yet. Oh, my gosh. Al's telling me the board is lit up like a Christmas tree, but we got a break. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, one of the things that I would like to uh, discuss with you this morning is the euro because we've got this holiday coming in and we're at such a critical level here uh, in the euro. If you notice, uh, this is the daily chart that we got up to that uh, 114.10 level. That was very important because you can see by the thunderbolt pattern there that formed a Gartley right at that high which was also a 382 retracement from the high way back in September. This means that it should be bearish here for the uh, euro because it's completed another ABCD pattern. That's only the second one we've had since September of last year. You'll notice the one between November and January. That was another ABCD right at a 61% retracement. So just by looking at the definition of the trend, if you have lower tops, and lower bottoms, which we do, you're in a downtrend. Now, you notice here that the correction that we made yesterday uh, around that 112.75 uh, has held. We're only trading at roughly 112, uh, well, roughly 113 this morning. So uh, if we start going below 112.50, folks, this is going to be a, a pretty nasty market to the downside, the way it looks to me. Now, maybe it's because people don't want to uh, invest in anything except our uh, 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 in instruments like in notes and bonds because you've got negative interest rates all across Europe and now you have Christine Lagarde from the IMF and uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how how that all works out but uh, we'll have to wait and see I really believe folks the flying Walinda out there the one that is going to be the real one that hurts everybody is uh uh, we'll be looking. Please have time between callers. Yes. Uh, you know, Tucker, uh, I would like to do that. And what we'll do is, Tucker, we're going to squeeze you in only because you're such a nice guy. 
So let's do the crude oil right now for Mr. Tucker. And what we need to do is we need to do the natural gas. And if anything is more important than natural gas, I don't really know. Let's take a look here at the crude oil for Tucker. Uh, you'll notice here, this is where we were Sunday night. We got up to 6030. That was the exact Fibonacci retracement, that little blue line. We're now down here trading at 56 and change. That tells us that this is a major top that we hit, and it's a lower top from the one in October, the one in April, and then the one we had yesterday, or, or yeah, day before yesterday. That tells you that that's pretty much a major top in here. Now, it wouldn't be good to talk about crude oil unless you also talked about the heating oil. Now, look at heating oil. This is even this is even more bearish because, as you see, the heating oil contract. You'll notice that uh, we hit this thing last Thursday and or, excuse me, last Friday, and it rolled over. So that's a uh, that's a, another bearish sign. We dropped quite a bit in that, both heating oil and in the uh, and seasonally, this is not a good time for heating oil. Uh, you know, I know it does some things for air conditioning, but heating oil rocks and rolls in the fall. So I would be looking for more downside action in both the crude oil and uh, the heating oil. It doesn't make any difference what's going on over in Austria with the with the folks with the Arab Spring trying to you know manipulate oil prices like they usually do. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It has to do with those cycles that are out there. And I think those are the ones that uh, that seem to be you know very, very important. That's uh, that's what it looks like to me. So let's keep an eye on that. Very, very important. Any other questions that we might have? By the way, the coffee still backed off a little bit. It's still looking very good. Uh, after we hit that target, let's put that. I think we still have that coffee, don't we? Yes, we do. Got to put the one hand up for Ruby because this has been a beauty here. Uh, we, when we made that target up there at the 114. Hit it spot on, folks. I mean, A, B, C, D, you can't make this stuff up. Then we had that shooting star candle. It, it immediately reversed about a nickel. Uh, we've come down a little bit more, but it's still holding very, very closely to that level. The next support level, and th this is this is really cool, folks. So pay oh yeah, don't pay attention if you don't want to. Look at the high that we made on June the 3rd. If you would just draw a line across there to, to that 105 level, you see that's going to be the really key support in the crude oil or in the coffee at that time, the cup of joe. So that's going to be 105.50. Then if you really want to get creative, is go down to the low in April and draw the line from the low in April to the high we made this week. And then and then connect what the 38.2% 30, retracement is. Bada bing, bada boom, 105.50. So if you want to buy the coffee, 105.50. We'll, of course, we'll check in with Ruby, of course, to make sure that that's a good thing to do, but that's it. Okay, let's move on here to the next thing that someone's asked me about, and that was the Japanese yen. Let's get it up here because we came down and made our objective here last night. I haven't updated this yet, folks, because I was running a little behind tonight. And with the size of my behind, you have to be a little quicker. We did get down to that 78% level, folks, 106 and change. This is very, very important here because if we don't hold these lows today in the Japanese yen, look out, that yen is going to weaken up. And that's not going to help uh, uh, the rest of that U.S. dollar crowd either. So that means it's going to be pretty interesting to uh, to see if it's going to be following that or not. We don't know for sure. Uh, oh, I know one thing someone's asked me, and I didn't correct it. Let me get the Canadian dollar up here, folks, because we had a question on that Canadian dollar, and I wanted to uh, make sure that I did it right. Let's just get it because we were holding that level. Yeah, this Canadian dollar is still at this double bottom level, folks. I don't know if it's going to hold or not. It, you know, we've been here now for, for one, two, three, four days. So it's going to be interesting to see whether this Canadian dollar, you know, can hold us low. This is why that euro is so important, folks, because these are all connected. Those those five major cross rates, you got the, you start with the, you got the euro versus the dollar. Then you have the, <coughs> excuse me, the yen. Then you have the pound, then you have the Canadian dollar, then you have the Australian dollar. You got all those lined up in there, and they're all telling you something big is getting ready to happen. Now you completed the ABCD in the Canadian dollar, and then you had a little three-day rally, and it went nowhere. This is not a bullish sign, folks. This means that that uh, that the dollar, the dollar could be losing to the Canadian dollar because this chart 
is really it's the it's the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar. It's actually reversed. So that means if the Canadian goes from 130, you know, to 120, that means it takes less to buy the U.S. goods. So anyway, pay attention to that. This is another interesting one that hasn't moved yet. The, these things are so tied together that it's uh, amazing. And here we are coming into a uh, well. Yesterday was the new moon and the solar eclipse. So. That, that, again, will also be, uh, you know, relatively important. Uh, someone asked a question about the S&P. I don't know. I mean, you know, we were short the S&P. It had a really nice move to the downside, turned around. Once we got above the 71 level for the second time yesterday, that pretty much told us that, you know, it was probably going to be uh, – not the uh, the right thing to do. Let's just put this up here and show you where that support held yesterday, the day before yesterday, because we talked about it here. You'll notice there's that same line there uh, where that big gap was. We went right in to fill the gap, and uh, away she went, started to go higher. So let's keep an eye on that. That's going to be an important one to look at. I wanted to show that intraday uh, chart. I think this is it. Yeah, here we go. Here's the intraday chart from last night on the E-mini S&P. <laughs> the chicken in his pot. The eagle has landed. Okay, let's move up here. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you and your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back, and we have a caller on the line. John, are you there? I am, sir. Thanks for taking the call. Thank you. Mr. Z from The Room is with us today, folks. What are you looking at, John? So first I have to ask you if, uh, as you pointed out, uh, a wife is shooting her husband in Florida, mm -hmm. telling authorities that she was really aiming at an alligator. If, uh, if that's going on in Florida, what, uh, what is happening out there in your neck of the woods, the formerly Wild West? <laughs> <laughs> John, I'm not really sure, but all I do know is, uh, you know, I'm 72 miles from Nogales, uh, Mexico, and uh, we play cards uh, in a tournament every week, and uh, we have several Border Patrol guys that play, and they say they've never seen it like this. All the people that are down there crossing are not from Mexico. They're from San Salvador and Nicaragua and places like that. So, uh, you know, I don't know how they got there, but that's that's what they say. And they say they it's it's quite violent. So they have to be really, really careful these days, which is sort of sad. But you hear things in the news. You don't know whether it's true or not. But that's beyond my pay, pay grade, cowboy. So what can I help you with? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Um Wanted to ask you a couple of things. Um, might um, might first ask a question on the uh, the bonds and the T notes. And as you uh, pointed out, uh, we went to higher highs last night. We have turned down a bit. Um, I wanted to ask now that that September bond futures contract has made multiple lows down at 154 and a half. And highs up here at 156 and a half. If we sell off uh, now in the next day, week, or several weeks, and if we break 154 and a half, I'm wondering if you could put up the uh, the two-hour or four-hour uh, bar chart of yours and and share with us what you'd be looking at uh, for spots that you'd be looking to book gains on shorts if that sort of thing occurred? Um, well, I, I wouldn't be looking to book shorts in this thing till they got to about 140, John. I mean, I'm really bearish. I don't know why people <laughs> think that these things are going to go up forever. But uh, they are going up now, but they're going up with, uh, uh, you know, dropping interest rates, John. And you and I have been in this business for co probably a combined total of 100 years. I would think it would be pretty close, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, yes, you, you've, been, you've been in 35, I've been in uh, 55 or 60, that's about, how many years you've been in the business? Uh, 35 nailed it, Larry. Okay, there you go. And so it's pretty 90-some years. I've, you know, and when, it, when open interest drops and prices go higher, that's short covering. And when the shorts stop covering, there's going to be a vacuum in there. And it's, but, you know, John, everybody's telling us that, you know, we're going to have zero interest rates. I mean, you've got guys like really smart, rich guys, Ray Dalio and, and Paul Tudor Jones and uh, Peter Druckermiller and uh, Jimmy Rogers. They're all saying this, but, you know, I must be the, I must be the, 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 the dullest knife in the drawer, buddy, because I don't see it. If this was really going crazy and people were buying these bonds and notes and inter open interest wasn't dropping, I wouldn't even think of being short this stuff. And remember, I was short at 155, I think 20, and uh, I got out of that. Uh, I stopped out at that 156 yesterday on that, and all we did is we went back and made a higher high from the 19th by, wow, a, a whopping total of five ticks in a Treasury bond contract. Give me a break. That's not big buying. I'm looking at your uh, your uh, hourly bar chart uh, placed in Tiger TV. So thanks on that. So here's a very specific question: 154 and a half. I see multiple lows going back to the 21st of June. Say we break that, um, and uh, for what it's worth, I, I shorted earlier this morning, so I am short. But if that works, and if we break those levels. Uh, as a trader, uh, help me with what you'd be looking at to say, hey, here's a spot I want to book a game. And I'm asking this question, just be prepared, uh, to be prepared uh, for that scenario, you know, whether it occurs or not. Well, if you're short here and you're, and you're, and you, you, you think, you, well, you've got a profit in it right now. So your first thing to look for 
uh, in the bonds is the bonds usually have a uh, 22 ticks from the high. So we went down, we went to 156.25. That takes you to one. Uh, 156.03 and if you look at 156.03 just go back to see what the high was back on the 25th you know which was uh 25th of june you, you'd be looking at uh, uh the, that exact high and that would be almost a 382 retracement from the low back on uh, july the first so that's the number 152 156 uh uh, 05. So I would be watching okay. that 0506 because that's down 22 ticks, and uh, that that would be it. Now, if you start accelerating below that, then that's different because if you get below, if you drop a full handle from here, uh, after just making that double top up here, uh, the people that bought it up there are going to say, and believe me, it's not new buying. Again, you're going to see open interest drop again tonight. I mean, it's every day, John. I mean, I can understand it, you know, a day or two here and there, but every day the open interest is dropping. I, you know, I'm the only guy on the uh, on a soapbox talking about this, and I I, I must have something wrong, but uh, uh, you know, I can, like Yogi Bear uh, said, I, I got to come to the dance with the girl I took Harry. to the dance, and that's what I'm doing. So we'll see. <laughs> and I, I don't have a position in bonds uh, other than a very small short that I put on last night after we made a new high. I resold it when it went uh, below 156.16, and it's only 156.12 uh, now. So that's what I'm looking at. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, I want to turn uh, turn the tables on you and ask about gold. Uh, sure. Now the uh, the gold futures are 1416, giving up just a a lot of that uh, rally that occurred last night. Uh, so you know, I guess I won't be surprised if we go back below 1400 again. But um, but uh, wanted to ask you this: if we bottom out here today. Uh, or in the coming days, but then uh, eventually in coming days, press above that 1443 high. Uh, if that occurs, can you just um, uh, uh, talk out the uh, the um, the patterns or the price targeting that you'd be using to identify where you'd want to book gains if we get over 1443? We get about 1443. The next level is 115, is 1510. And once we get above 1510, John, they're going to be sniffing at the door at 1932, which was the high back in 2011, because this thing could really get going here. Uh, if silver would ever pick up, and I don't know if it ever will or not, because uh, you know it's a much smaller market. It's one sixth the size of the gold market, so it's really sort of insignificant. But uh, if that would happen, that would start to bring some players in the silver. We're not seeing any open interest increases in silver. It goes up one day, down the next. I mean, just a few hundred contracts each day. But with the gold, you've got players. You've got thousands. You've pointed it out in the den many times that, you know, on these breaks, you know, you'll have big volume, and then all of a sudden the market reverses and goes back up. And it tells you the bulls are in control, which they certainly are. John, we had a $28 move in gold yesterday off that bottom. You know, that's a lot of money. You know, silver moved. Yeah, I can, uh, uh, I'll just share this with you. I was uh, in front of the screens when, at uh, nine o'clock New York time when gold was making its high last night at fourteen forty-one, and uh, hey, John, volume was we, actually we gotta, on we, the lights. We got to pay a few bills. Stay with us till after the break, could you please? Sure thing. You bet. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. All right, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Mr. Z from the TFNN Tiger Den. John, are you still there? Still am. Okay, and I believe we were chatting about the uh, Treasury bonds. Is that correct? Yeah, we were. Uh, we last spoke there about the gold, and I, the, the idea I was just going to share uh, that I made note of last night at nine o'clock when the uh, contract made its fourteen forty one high. It was just fascinating. The rally that took place seven eight o'clock was on just modest volume, and it kind of makes sense. You know, uh, Asia hasn't fully kicked in, and night hours are uh, often kind of low volume anyway. But then at 9 o'clock, there was a 10-minute uh, a uh, 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 time window, one bar, where there was just a flurry of buying met with big selling right there at 1441. I think 10,000 contracts were unloaded up there. So somebody somebody uh, uh, shorted uh, and somebody bought the highs, and that's right where you reversed. So that was uh, – I thought that was kind of fascinating. Yes, that's uh, – that, and especially in a market that jumps around like gold, you know, it moves $1,000 in a heartbeat nowadays, which is good for trading. But uh, for investors, it's a little uh, nerve-wracking, I think. Uh, John, uh, what's your feeling on the corn market in here? We've had a really monster rally of about $0.12 cents a, a bushel here after breaking, uh, you know, just about $0.65 cents a bushel. What's your feeling in here? Yeah, I bought it down there against that gap back, I think it was um... – was it uh, the day after Memorial Day weekend? We had a gap higher. I think that was the date, but uh, there was a gap at 420. Interestingly yep. enough, on Monday, uh, Monday evening, the the price went down and tested that within half a penny. Sure so that did. was just sure a did. sign for me that 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 was a uh, a low risk buy, whether the trade worked or not. Uh -huh. Of course, now the trade is working, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, as people reading what I've posted in the Tiger's Den the past couple of days, I just have this nagging suspicion that the numbers put out by USDA last Friday on acreage 
uh, could have been faulty. Um, so, um, so frankly, uh, I, I don't know where it's going to go, but I wouldn't be surprised if if the actual uh, uh, crop size is smaller than priced in right now with higher prices coming in the next 30 days. So, so I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, Simon only pointed that out to me, that there was a strong relationship between 1993 when we had a late planting and uh, the same type of situation. But this year it's even worse because they didn't get much of the corn crop in in certain areas of Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa. But it's amazing how the corn went right down to that gap at uh, 420. And I had an order setting at 420, John. It got to, to 420 and a quarter, and I had fallen asleep. So I, I did, by the time I had... Uh, I had woken up. It was already six cents higher, so I, I, well, I wouldn't have bought it six cents higher anyway. But I got missed that one again. So lately, the bus stop is uh, they're asking for extra quarters. So I'm going to have to get in, oh, in my pocket and risk a little more. Yeah, that that, that happens sometimes. Um, one last question for you ahead of the holidays. Um, of course, we most of us have got uh, friends and family activities uh, uh, going on here, but. Um, just I point this out, uh, gold, silver futures, oil, natural gas, the bonds even, and the currencies, they are virtually open uh, regular hours through the end of the week with the exception of tomorrow afternoon. Um, the fact that those markets remain open as they uh, are going to be, uh, how does that impact what you do as a trader, uh, either holding open positions or closing them out. Well, John, I really don't. I don't. Well, I don't have any really big positions on right now because, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, I have silver. That's the only thing that I that I really have on. Uh, you know, right now I got stopped out of bonds about a week ago. And I haven't really re-entered that, so that's about the only thing that I'm looking at right now. But what I will do is I will go back and look at uh, some of these uh, intraday moves that we have because you know that on days like that, you can have tremendous moves of that uh, moving around. But, John, can I change the subject for just a little bit? Um, someone's asked a, a question about natural gas, and you, you got us onto this natural gas last year before it moved $10,000, if you remember I believe it was April uh, when you really start. What was it? What, what was it? No, it was February uh, when you we, when you got uh, really the big move uh, that yeah. we were on was from October into December first. Okay. Well, right now what we're sitting on, I just posted the chart here. We got a three drive to a bottom pattern, a very nice symmetry of about three weeks in between the moves, or six weeks in between the moves. We tested the bottom down there at 215, which was the 78% level on the long-term weekly chart. We rallied up, and then yesterday and the day before, we came right down to the 61% retracement at the old magic number of 222. We're trading at 227 right now. John, this looks like we could have a heck of a move to the upside if it starts going. What's your feeling here? Yeah, I, um, uh, I'm a buyer like you are, trading from the long side exclusively. I'll share this. My, my, uh, my expectations for the amount of money uh, to be made here uh, buying, my expectations are modest is what I'd, I, mm -hmm. I'd, uh, I'd say. Okay. Uh, so, in other words, while I think this is a bottom forming in price, uh, I don't have any reason that I can come up with thinking that we get a sizable rally. Uh, what I can say is you've come down in a pattern you recognize. You've come down into your Fibonacci support that you pointed out, and that's all supported by the uh, observation I make that speculators as a group – have liquidated all their longs in the natural gas and are now flat to modestly net shorts. And what I'll share with you, my experience over the past 15, 20 years on energy futures is that bottoms uh, almost always occur once speculators have gotten flat to modestly net shorts. So we're uh, thinking about positioning and groups. Speculators as a group are always wrong at extremes, and uh, given the history I've looked at the past 15 years, we're at the point where uh, 
uh, the signal is the speculators are wrong here, being flat to modestly short. Uh, I, I can't see any reason why it would run 20 percent. That doesn't mean we can pop 5 and 10 percent and chop around and make some money by buying dips, uh, uh, you know, the next uh, couple of weeks, next couple of months. So that's, that's about all I can uh, uh, say to you on that. Well, that's good. I hope everything's going okay. Uh, you know, I know you're taking care of uh, uh, one of your parents now, which is an admirable thing to do, my friend. And I want to wish you the best of luck and travel safe. And uh, stay with us, buddy, because you're a real great contributor to the TFNN. We really appreciate the things that you post. And, uh, boy, some of the trades that you have are just absolutely uh, mind-boggling. So that's uh, that's really good. So thanks for joining us today, John. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your help, and uh, happy 4th to your clan. You bet. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to remind you tomorrow I'm going to be taking the day off like everybody else, trying to do something good for a veteran or someone that's homeless tomorrow, folks. A lot of people out there hurting badly. But on Friday, I'm going to spend some time, the first half hour of the show, going over what I did during the 60s when there was the big Russian grain robbery and the markets took off and Cyclotech with uh, the work of Jim Hurst was there. And I'm going to try to show you how I simulated some of this stuff. Um, I, I learned about the Fibonacci numbers in 1970 from uh, John Hill, and uh, I'll bring that into it also. But I'll show you the type of trading that I did at that time. I don't do that type of trading uh, too much anymore. Once in a while, I I will, but as I looked at what I was doing, I said, my gosh, I better start doing this again. Uh, and that's building positions. In other words, buying four or five at one level and two or three at another, and then starting to pyramid when the market starts to break out. Whether whether I decide to do that yet or not, I don't know. But at my age now, I'm having so much fun just trading these markets because there's so much volatility that it's really great. So try not to miss the show on Friday if you can. It will be archived, I'm sure, but there's going to be some good information in there. I'm going to explain how high translation and left translation works. Uh, that was done very well by uh, David White here. He discusses that quite a bit. That gives you a rough idea of what we're looking at. And I'll bring you some of the things that Larry Williams worked on, price counts and things like that. So uh, we're a new high in, in the stocks. We're a new high in the bonds. But uh, we're not seeing any open interest increases in these bonds and notes, folks. I don't know when it turns over. I don't know when it turns over. But when it does, it's going to be interesting. This is for sure. Now, we were looking for 156.05 in those bonds. So far, we've been to 08. We're trading at 13 right now. So watch that level, 156.05 in the September bonds. Because breaking below that, would be a relatively negative sign, in my opinion. So let's pay attention to that. And have a happy 4th of July. We live in the greatest country in the world. We've got lots of problems, but problems can be solved. So just keep that in mind. So live every day in an attitude of, ha an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. See you all on Friday, folks.